Okay, hi everyone. How are you guys? Yes, sir. We are fine, sir. What about you, sir? I'm good too. So, got two new students today, Shrinivas and Uril. Uh, hi, Uril. So, you guys, uh, can you tell me your years of experience, Shrinivas and Uril? Total number of years experience in networking. Okay, right now they are on mute, so we'll update that. Okay, guys, so let's start with the class today. And we're going to continue from wherever we left yesterday. Okay. I hope you're able to see my screen. Yes, sir. So today we're going to start with, yeah, anyone having any question from yesterday class? Uh... Like how we can enable this hello fast? You told yesterday one concept. Yeah, so there is an interface level command which by which you can do that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. And yesterday, like uh, we discussed, like we why we cannot use EIGRP for the traffic engineering, right? Mm -hmm. I think there is a requirement or condition like uh, in the traffic engineering we can use and any IGP that can have uh, the topology, the complete topology information. That's why we are using link state routing uh, protocols. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So SPF states. So first state is going to be a down state. Okay. Which is the state which is known as initial state. So no hellos exchange. Okay. No hellos are sent. After this, it is gonna be your init state, okay? Where you will have hello sent and received between your neighbor, okay? Uh -huh. So this is you, this is your neighbor. You're gonna send the hello. You're gonna receive the hello, okay? So as soon as you get the hello, it will, from your neighbor, it's gonna go to the next state, which is two-way state which is where you will have the bi-directional communication. So what is bi-directional communication? Bi-directional communication means you and your neighbor both get the hello of each other. Okay. Like then, but what's the difference between inert and two-way? I think uh, router one is having its own router ID in the hello package mm. that he, it will receive from R2, right? Mm -hmm. In two-way, yes. in two-way, right? So again, each router which is gonna send the hello, it's gonna insert the router ID, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Then if it is on the LAN communication, if there is uh, you are on the LAN, then DR and BDR election is gonna happen at this state. Okay. <clears throat> After this, it's gonna move on to the next state, which is X start. Okay, so X start is a state where your master and slave negotiation happen. So what is master and slave? So what is happen is you need to exchange your you need like to exchange who, your who, who DD, send DBD like packets. Okay, huh. so it's gonna determine who is gonna send your DBD packet first. Okay, so who gonna send DBD packet first. Okay. So that is need to determine. So whoever is a highest router ID in OSPF, that is gonna be send the DBD packet first. Okay. And this that will become the master. So once the master and slave negotiation happens, then they move on to the exchange state where actual exchange of DBD packet happens. Okay, exchange of DBD packet. And by the way, DBD packet is a reliable packet. So you need to have the acknowledgement for your DBD packet, which comes from the other side. Okay. Then 
after this if you missed any of your lsr okay any any of your lsa then it gonna ask for that lsa okay so it gonna send the lsr packet which i have told you yesterday okay so it gonna send lsr and then your neighbor is gonna send LSU, right? Link state update which contains your LSAs. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then after this, they're gonna go to the full state. Full state where they become the fully adjacent. Okay. And your LSDB, which is link state database, is fully sync okay so these are the different state guys and if you see i have highlighted it into three different colors so it has some meaning okay what does it mean so if you what see is, the first three states sorry what, what does that say for four what state is that which one four which one x start full? x start x start X so X start is you need to decide which router is gonna start sending the DBD packet first. Okay. Relative. Is... What's the difference between master slave and DR BDR? Is there any? So is master there any... is no, no con no connection of master slave with okay. DR BDR. Master okay, slave right. is only used for DBD packet. Okay, right, right. Okay. So first three states, if you see, they are forming your neighborship. Or uh, neighbor adjacency, I can write. Okay. Yes. Your next states is gonna doing what? They are gonna syncing your database. Okay. And then after it gonna sync it, it gonna be route calculation, which is gonna happen. Which route will go? best route will go into the routing table okay so this is your ospf states in any interview if you say that you know ospf so this is definitely the gonna be the question that they're gonna ask to you okay mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in dr uh, dr bdr will there mm -hmm. only be one dr BD and one bdr in the area or there can be multiple dr and yes BDR? so we we're gonna talk about that i'm gonna go on the dr BDR topic after this okay. okay now the important thing here is you need to understand the troubleshooting that if you're gonna stuck in any of this state okay so why you gonna stuck and what are the possible reason okay. sorry uh, we have sir. one question here yeah. Hello? Yes, Shiniva. Sir, is there any difference between adjacency and the neighborship? Yeah, so yesterday I have told the difference. Uh, yes, sir, actually I missed that class due to some reason. Okay. okay, so neighbor is going to be whatever is the adjacent router, it is going to be your neighbor. Okay, but adjacency is when you're going to go with all these seven states. Four states, okay. It's going to make the adjacent. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh. I have a question, sir, here, like, actually, mm. uh, like, okay, like, if we will go through all seven states, then the urgency will be formed, okay? Mm. But, like, uh, that will be in case, like, when DR and BDR will be selected. So, yes. So, when okay, DR, BDR like, is going to happen, there is some right. other DR other which going to go up to two-way state only, okay? Yes, like, if we will not have uh, mm. DR, BDR, then only it will, it will have only two-way, mm. right? Yes, so we are gonna talk about that. Wait for okay. that. Thank you, sir. Okay, so troubleshooting. So basically, normally, if you got stuck in init state, so you need to check your hello packets, okay, whether they are getting or sending, going to your neighbor directly or not. Okay, so debug IP OSPF hello is can tell you. But by the way, guys, before doing any debug command in your production environment, you need to take your manager approval. Some commands will generate a lot of output in a one go. 
which can crash your router okay so normally it is not recommended to use debug commands in production environment okay but even if you want to generate then you need to think first whether you want to do it or not okay so you need to check your hello okay you need to check your hello parameters if they are matching or not some of the parameters need to be match okay sometime net issues if you are running net between then that can also cause that okay now mostly in ospf you gonna stuck in x start or exchange state okay so mostly if if you stuck in these states so you need to check two things one is mtu mismatch okay or you can check for duplicate router id okay so this can happen okay so these are some of the states where you're gonna stuck mtu mismatch you can also stuck in loading okay so if you are stuck in loading you can also again check mtu mismatch for that okay if you stuck in two way there is two way state so check your layer two because two way is drbdr sometimes happens like uh two way you will mostly drbdr is gonna happen so sometimes if layer two is broken okay then you can stuck in two way so these are some of the things you need to check when you're doing the neighborship okay so this is all related to your ospf states after this we come to a conditions to form ospf neighbor okay for ospf neighborship so first condition is your hello and dead interval should match okay your network type should match again there are some exception to this we're going to talk about later on your area id should match okay your authentication password should match if configured okay if configured it should have a unique router id your mtu needed to be match okay other all, although there is one command on the interface level by which you can ignore this okay so there is a command like ipospf mtu ignore so some cases need to have the mtu different those cases you can see that okay then in case of ipv4 your subnet should be same okay that is not a thing for ipv6 for ipv6 your interface can be part of different subnets because ipv6 forming the neighborship with link local address they're not going to form the neighborship with global unicast addresses okay so these are the some of the parameters which you need to have it okay and what about again, uh router priority so priority doesn't matter here for neighbor for neighborship okay? okay and stub area flag okay so if you are running it with the stub area so within the area you should have the all the routers to be stub otherwise they're not going to form the neighborship <clears throat> so these are some of the things which needs to be match okay okay so after this let's talk about ospf router id so why we use ospf router id do anyone have idea first of all it is a 32 bit number why we use router id in ospf 
for selection of dr bdr mm -hmm. what else to differentiate uh, sp processes not processes but yeah it's going to differentiate something basically if if i say like it is going to uniquely identify your ospf router okay so higher is better guys after you done with speaking please put your mic on mute thank you okay so higher is better there is a preference order okay what is the preference order is first of all you if you manually configure that is going to be taken okay or if you not manually configured then whatever is the highest ip on your loopback it is going to be taken okay if there is no loopback then highest ip on the physical interface and if there is no physical interface then there is no ip on any physical interface what is going to happen what it going to take mac address so there is no concept of mac address here no, no. like highest interface so ip so, is not there yeah the, the um the um priority no how it gonna select the router id if there is no you're not manually configured there is no loopback there is no ip on any physical interface it, it'll pick one by itself what anything it'll choose one so, but what it gonna choose highest interface value no so basically if there is no ip configured on any physical interface your ospf process will not start you will get a error okay that ospf process cannot start because router id is not selected so you need to have one physical interface ip okay and so, by the way guys that ip that physical interface even if not participating in ospf that is okay okay so it is not compulsory that that interface is participating in ospf yes okay. tell me and router id is a, a unique number for the uh, is identification number for the router or it can be unique for each interface is for the whole router it is only it is it is for your whole router whole router Okay. <clears throat> okay. So for stability reason, it is recommended that you manually configure or loopback app uh, address it should use. Okay. So that it will not change. Because if you change router ID, it's gonna recompute your SPF calculation. Okay. Now how you gonna change it? If you want to change, then you will have two option either you reload your router okay or device wherever you are using or you need to do clear ip ospf process okay which is going to break your adjacencies here this command so do not ever run this command in your production it's going to reset your neighborship or adjacency okay it will be soft reset or hard reset there is no concept of soft or hard here okay okay going to break the neighborship fully okay. Okay. okay so this is what we do router id anyways router id <clears throat> we going to see where we use it okay after this let's talk about ospf router priority okay so this is a different than your router id so ospf router priority <clears throat> so router ospf router priority is used to influence your ds dr bdr election
okay so by default the value is gonna be one higher is gonna be better okay so if tie for example if priority you will have a tie then your highest router id is gonna be win your range is gonna be 0 to 255 and it is non preemptive so again i'm gonna talk about what is non preemptive <clears throat> so first let's talk about drbd then we're gonna come back to router priority as well because i need to write one more statement here okay so what do you understand by drbdr why we use drbdr all the updates or any uh, the packet flows through the, through the dr basically the traffic is flowing mm -hmm. through dr in a in a broadcast okay, network and in a broadcast network, if we have a N router, mm. the connection is going to be far. N into N minus 1 by 2. Mm. So in order to reduce this count, we'll mm. have a concept of a DRBDR. So what is the problem with adjacencies? If, if I am having N and minus 2 adjacencies, what is the issue with that? Yeah. For example, let's say uh, there is a hundred routers so in uh, mm. a VRD. That that I got it. Okay. Yeah. And that uh, I got that that you will get and the CPU utilization and the memory how, utilization. How your adjacency is gonna increase the CPU utilization? So uh, those many uh, those many connections we have, those many routes mm. it will like try to exchange. Those many right. routes. So basically have. adjacency is not having that much impact although they are having impact as well but yeah. they're gonna exchange lsa with each other right that is the bigger, biggest problem right yeah yeah so that is gonna use your cpu and memory utilization okay yes so by the way guys uh, if you not use drbdr what is gonna happen your for example if they are on the same broadcast network okay so again, this is a logical diagram. Physical, you can assume that there is a switch here, okay? So what is gonna happen is, they're gonna try to form the neighborship with each other. So that this is for R1, this is for your R2, okay? Which is having the neighborship here, here. And then you will have the neighborship with R3, which is gonna form it here with him and him. And you will have R4. So one is here, one is here, okay. okay. So total number of neighborship that they're gonna form is, there is a formula N, N minus one by two, okay, where N is gonna be your number of routers. So if I see it in our diagram, four routers. So four, four minus one by two, which comes to six neighborship, right? And if you count this, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so you can calculate the number of neighborships through this formula. Okay, so again, neighborship is not a problem, but the problem is every router is gonna exchange the LSA with each other. Okay, and that is gonna increase your CPU and memory utilization. Okay, which is a problem. So, <clears throat> For these networks, we're gonna decide to select DRBDR. And by the way, guys, before we do that, let me ask one question for you. This is connected via E0 by zero, both sides. Do we have DRBDR in this topology which I have made on the left? No, sir. No. Okay. And because it, is, yes, it will have a shank. It is not a broadcast network. Okay. Ethernet Ethernet network is a broadcast network. It will have. Okay. So two different opinions. So I need the answer of others as well.
could you clarify? I, I, my question is, do they have the DRBDR in this topology, which I have drawn in the left, this one? Yes, they will uh, They will have this DRBDR. If it's point okay. to point, then no need for it, right? Okay, so someone is saying point to point, someone is saying no, someone is saying yes, what else? Pankaj, uh, Pankit, yes, PT, uh, Omar, I will, yeah. I, this looks point to point to me, so I'll Okay. Yeah, for me too. Yeah, point to point. Okay. What do you understand by point to point, guys? One to one, there's no need. Let's for talk it. about that. Hmm. One to one, or so, you have you have only two IPs in your subnet mask, like slash thirty one. Okay. That would be a point to point network. Okay. So there are two concepts. One is point to point topology, and one is point to point network in OSPF. So this is a point-to-point -to -point topology, but this is not a network, point-to-point -point network in OSPF, okay? Because point-to-point -point network in OSPF is only serial connections, which are running HDLC, PPP, okay? And your T1, E1, these type of connections, okay? So this is first of all, not point-to-point, -point, OSPF point of view, okay? okay. And Ethernet is a broadcast medium. No matter whether you are having Ethernet, fast Ethernet, gig Ethernet, 10 gig, 40 gig, 100 gig, 400 gig, 800 gig. Okay, nowadays 800 gigs are also there. Cisco, yes, uh, like last month released the 800 gig switch. Okay, so all these are gonna be a broadcast network OSPF point of view. So there is going to be a DRBDR election here. Always remember this thing. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter, only two routers are there. So your DRBDR is going to be per segment. It is not per area. Someone asked that question, I think, 15 minutes back. Uh, okay. yes, yes, I did ask. It's going to be per again? I didn't understand. Per segment. So let me tell you that again. So these are all Ethernets, okay? Or fast Ethernet or gig, whatever you like. But these are Ethernet medium. So guys, there is going to be a DR, BDR here. So one router will become DR, one router will become BDR. There is going to be DR, BDR here. One router will become DR, one router will become BDR. There is going to be DR, BDR here. One router will become DR, one router become BDR, okay? So your DR, BDR election is going to be per segment. What do you mean by per segment? This is a segment. So basically per, per any neighbor, neighborship, uh, like... Yes. Or per link, you can say. Per link, exactly. So okay. but seeing, make seeing sure topology you, about... Make sure your link is... Ethernet. If it is not Ethernet, for example, if it is a serial link. So there is no DRBDR here. Because serial link will OSPF will use the network type of point to point. Here, OSPF will use network type of broadcast. Okay. So here, here, here for Ethernet. Okay, so some people will only have confusion that this type of topology is only going to have the DRPDR. Okay. Got it, guys? Important point. Even a lot yes, of sir. interviewers going to ask this for you. Exactly, sir. Yes. Mm. So one question uh, yeah. is, so what will be the configuration on those interfaces? So we go interface gig 0, zero. And uh, IPOSPF network will be what point to point? No. So again, by default, they are gonna be automatically broadcast or non or point to point. You don't need to give any configuration. Okay. But if you want to stop this DR BDR election, then you need to change it to point to point. So 
So if you want to change, then there is a configuration which is IP OSPF network, and you need to define it as point to point. Okay. By default, they are broadcast. Yeah. I'm going to show you in just ten minutes. We're okay. going to do the lab. Okay. okay. So if you want to stop this election, you're going to make them point to point. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> what gonna happens when we select the RBDR? So one router is become. So let's as let's go back to our topology where we are having. this and let me do something interesting for you so one router will become dr how are you going to select that who will become dr who is having as port ready sorry who is having as port ready that will be selected. with the highest the router with the highest priority Okay, so router is gonna be with the highest priority. If priority is gonna be same, then then uh, router, router ID, priority. highest router, router ID. ID. Who is having highest router ID? Okay, so highest router ID. So let's assume that this is having we we change the priority and R one is having the highest priority. Okay, so that that will become the DR. Now the second router which is having the second highest priority will become the BDR. Okay, so. Let's assume that R three will become the BDR. Okay, I have set the second highest priority here. So now what is going to happen is the other routers are known as DR others. First of all, understand the naming. Uh, just a quick question. It may be silly, yeah. but uh, as you said that DR BDR is selected per link, right? So mm -hmm. Won't there be a DRBDR DR selection between R2 and R4? Because, Which means? Uh, Where? R2, between, a link between R2 and R4, mm -hmm. right? So they're mm -hmm. also connected between each other and it's a broadcast domain. So won't there be a DRBDR mm -hmm. DR selection between those two as well? So let's assume I have made the, those links as point to point, okay? Okay. Uh, because yeah. I, I, I need to tell you I... some other concept. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 okay. No problem. I was just trying to clear some doubts. Yes. Here, yes. No yes. Yes. If it is not a point to point, then there is going to be a DRBDR selection for that. But let's assume that those are point to point. Okay. These okay. links which are connecting it directly between the routers. Okay. Okay. I have made the OSPF network ties as point to point. Okay. So <clears throat> now OSPF is running on all the links. Okay. First of all, what is going to happen here is first there are two three things happen. So one is your neighborship so your neighborship is gonna be formed full with dr and bdr only okay so this is what is gonna happen Now, what is the neighborship you're going to form on your, between your DR others? And by so, the way, let's remove this thing because again, this is a point to point link. So forgot about that. So between dr others okay so through this point this this is going to be a osp of neighborship they're going to form so this neighborship will go in a two-way up to two-way only it's not going to go as a full neighborship and your lsas is going to be exchanged only with dr bdr okay but your DR is gonna advertise back to other DR others. Okay, BDR is not gonna advertise that. Although you're gonna exchange the LSA with BDR as well, but BDR is not gonna advertise it back because that is a DR responsibility. Okay. Now you guys can see that between two D DR others, you will have a two-way neighborship. So what does it mean? It means 
they're not going to exchange any LSA with each other, okay? Because up to the two-way, only neighborship is going to form. You can see this. Yes. Up to two-way, only neighborship are there. Your database synchronization is going to happen after two-way. Getting yes. my point? Exactly. So they're not going to exchange anything with each other, okay? Now my question is, if uh, some people are having issues, so let me remove this. Okay, so I am having your SPF neighborship two-way with R2 and R4. I am having the full neighborship with my DR and BDS, all that, okay? Now tell me, guys, if I want to send a packet from R2 to R4, so tell me the full path. R2 will go to R1, R1 to R4. Yeah. Okay. So your packet will go like from R2, it's going to go to R1. And from R1, it's going to go to R4. Why you say like that? What is the logic behind that? You will have a neighborship directly between R2 and R4. Because then why pack it? Because uh, our DR, the DR holds the information for our, um, all the other. So basically, product. you want to say uh, your they have LSA when, when they're going to send, when R4 is going to send the LSA, your LSA is going to go to R1 first, right? Because LSA is going to be exchanged only with DR, right? And your so these these white arrows are LSAs, okay, which is for this network 4444. And then DR is going to send that. Right? And right. that's why the traffic will flow via DR. So don't you think it is a Suboptimal routing means why it's going to go to R1 when R2 and R4 is having the OSPF neighborship with two way. What was the question again? Why? Why are your packets are going via R1 when R2 and R4 is having the two way neighborship with each other? Yes, because that, they are having the two way, so they cannot exchange this LSA. LSA is like a, a come after mm. like a two way. It is it mm. is not having the full state neighborship. Mm. Okay. No, it doesn't. Yeah, have so, so it it doesn't exchange any data. Yeah, the, or the, LSA the, information. Mm. Okay. The database is on R one. Okay. Okay, guys. Do anyone here who can say that it's going to exchange the data directly with each other, R2 to R4? Yes, sir. Yes, no one here who want to support me? i going to say that. For the teacher. Sorry? I support you if you're saying it's correct. <laughs> Okay, so by by the way, guys, your data plane packet is going to go directly. And how it's going to go directly, I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> so what is going to happen here is when your LSAs are go from R1, your DR will not change next hop. So if next hop is not changed, for example, there is a IP which is 10, 1 .1 1.1.4 here. Okay, and this is IP 10.1.1.2. This is IP 10.1.1.1. So your LSA is going via DR, but when it reaches to R2, what is the next stop will be present in that? So LSA is going from where to where? LSA is going from R4 to R1, R1 to R2, no doubt. 
but what is going to be the next stop when it reaches to r2 3 dot 4 okay so dot 4 it is not going to be dot 1 because dr is this is not going to change your next stop so now simple routing logic nothing to do with ospf what r2 is going to see r2 is going to see how i i am reaching 10.1.1.4 and it gonna get that answer that it is going to be directly reachable via switch one right now this is a layer to switch okay so forgot about that switch as well so it is going to be directly reachable so it gonna send the data packet directly so <clears throat> guys if this is pink arrows are my data plane traffic my data plane traffic will not go via dr they gonna go directly so now to summarize this you this is your control plane traffic i hope you know what is control plane traffic and what is data plane traffic right and this pink arrows is going to be data plane so your data plane will not go via dr your control plane is only going to go via dr and this is a optimization because why i am putting one extra hop of sending the data packet why r1 it should be in the transit path if i am having a direct connectivity is there a question yeah um so i don't think that it, it would then be would make any sense if they got a direct neighborship form mm. um if if we there if they would have to go all the way to the um, dr i think that would be taxing mm. taxing on the dr it is mm. going to be a waste of on hops yeah so waste of hops waste of bandwidth and it is going to be a unnecessary load on your dr right so that is why your data plane traffic will go directly correct right. okay and guys remember this thing this is important that's why it happens in broadcast mediums your next stop is not never is going to be changed via dr okay so this is the important logic okay one more thing here i need to tell you is there are two things i need to tell which is one is non preemption i have written it somewhere here non preemptive and the other thing just a second yeah. just a second one thing is non preemptive and the other thing is priority should be greater than 0 if you put priority as zero on the router okay then that router will not be eligible to become dr or that router will not be eligible to become bdr so not eligible to become dr bdr okay and preemption non preemption means if dr fails what is going to happen Right BDR now, BDR will become the DR. Right now, in my topology, my DR is R one, BDR is R three. Now R one fails. So what is gonna happen? My BDR will become oh. DR, and it gonna choose a new BDR, right? Yes. Now what is gonna happen if R one come back again? And after that, there's no. Time. Uh, still, still, my BDR mm -hmm. will be the DR and. Uh, selected bdr will be the yes. bdr so there is nothing going to be change okay this is going to be there so it is not going to do anything so that means by non preemptive okay and you cannot enable the preemption this is by default non preemptive okay so that means by non preemptive yes someone was asking any a question right in between ah uh, shank uh, that's me only Mm -hmm. no uh, when uh, from r2 to r4 or r4 to r2 when data mm. traffic is going directly mm. what would be the next stop from r4 to r2 from r4 to r2 yes so again that is vice versa it's direct it's two way i have made yeah i have made only one way there is going to be a second way as well so when 2222 is advertised it is going to be 
again your next stop is going to be directly 101112 for r4 getting my okay. point okay so for the only for the lsa exchange those things it yes. is going to yes. use the tr and pdr yes but for so again, data, if I... it is directly going to the r2 to yeah. r4 or r2 to r3 r3 to r4 it doesn't right. go via R3 to R1, R1 to R4, R3 to R1. Forgot R3. R3. PDR is not there in the picture. Okay, so forgot about yeah. the BDR. It is just okay. a backup DR. The only concept here is we need to talk about DR yeah, and yeah. DR others. Okay. May I ask a question also? Yeah. Um, I know you just I know what you just said about BDR. So on a network, um, during all this this uh, traffic the bdr is just sitting there is it doing anything or just a wait, waiting waiting just in mm. case that on dr fails mm. yes okay okay and this election is going to happen via hello packets okay because hello packet packets have all that information like your router priority all that stuff okay router id and all that stuff and yeah one more thing is when dr others send lsa to dr and bdr they're gonna use the multicast ip of 2240.0.6 and when dr and bdr wants to send or basically i can write dr sending lsa okay to dr others then they're gonna use 224.0.0.5 and those topology where you don't have DR, BDR, only this is going to be used, okay? 224005. Okay. Okay, yes, so yes. if I understand correctly, so uh, say router 2 sends an LSA to DR, mm -hmm. it, would, it will use IP.6. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then when DR since the LS, uh, LSA update of router 2 to R4, it will change the IP from 6, it will use dot five. Right, so that is a multicast IP only used for LSAs, okay? No, right. Nothing to do with data packet. Yeah. Okay? Yep. And if and the topologies where you don't have DR, BDR, for example, the point-to-point -point topologies, the only IP is gonna be used is 224.0.0.5, okay? Understood. Okay. Okay, so after this, let's talk about loopback interface. Uh, or let's first talk about OSPF load balancing. So guys, only equal cost load balancing. It can do. Okay, by default, max, it can go four path only. You can change this. There is a router level command, okay, which, which stands by maximum path. Okay, and then you can specify. So again, some of the routers can go up to 16 path only, and now some high-end routers, you can go up to 32 paths as well. Okay, so this is what load balancing is gonna happen. Why, how this load balancing? So equal cost load balancing, okay? So if you're having the same cost, then only it's gonna do that. Okay, so after that, let's understand loopback interface. So OSPF treat loopback interface as a stub network, okay, as stub. So what is gonna happen? So first of all, you cannot form neighborship through that. Okay. You cannot form loop uh, neighborship over loopback. And no matter whatever mass you gonna configure, it's gonna always advertise your loopback with slash 32 host route. So okay. So if you want to send it with correct mass, then what you need to do, you need to make the network type on the loopback interface as point to point. IP OSPF. 
point to point. So you need to make the network type point to point, then only it's gonna advertise with the correct mass. Otherwise, it's gonna advertise as a slash 32 host row. Okay. So this is what happens with the OSPF loop pack. After this OSPF passive interface, So it's gonna, uh, if you make any interface as passive interface in OSPF, it's gonna do two, three things, okay? It's gonna prevent hello on that interface. So it's gonna prevent sending hello basically. So if you not send hello on a particular interface, what is gonna be end effect? It will not take a, it will not make a neighborship. OSPF yeah, so process no, one start. Okay, so no. No neighborship process is going to be there, but no neighborship over that interface. Okay, it's going to prevent your update as well. So your LSA will not go over that interface. So why we need that? Like as per our requirement, sometime we are having some router that we we don't want to include uh, like uh, in OSPF neighborship or some uh, some router can have like uh, less uh, specifications, less memory or other things. So in that case, like uh, we do this. So if you don't want to run the neighborship with any router, then do not configure that interface in OSPF. Correct. Yes. Like we are, we are having that router uh, in our network, but like. Uh... Hmm. So let's see that in the lab. Okay, I'm gonna show you in the lab why we use it. Okay, but by the way, you got the concept why we use it. Like what it's gonna have the effect, okay? Okay, so now these are some of the basic things. Uh, so we do the lab, I think today, let's see. So how are we gonna configure OSPF? There are two ways to configure OSPF. Can anyone tell me? Basic configuration. So one is at the router level. Interface. And one is at the interface level. You can enable OSPF at the router level. You can enable inter uh, OSPF into a interface level. So what is, if I talk about router label, what is the command to configure OSPF? Do anyone knows? Router OSPF. Router OSPF. And then the ID. So router OSPF is whatever is process ID. And by the way, this process ID, let's talk about this process ID as well. What is, what do you mean by this process ID? And, uh, um... So basically, Locally you can Okay. It's going to uniquely identify your process of OSPF because multiple processes you can run. Okay. It is locally significant. What does it mean? What do you mean by locally significant? We no need to have a similar process IDs between two hmm. routers. Any process okay. ID we can have. Uh, okay. So any process ID, ID you can have? 32 bit number. Yes. Not 32 bit. Is it 32? The yeah. 4 bit. Yes, yes, 32 bit. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, 2 to the power means, means the range is from 1 to 6, 5, 5, 3, 5. Okay, so you can calculate how many bits it is there. Okay. I think this is 2 to the power 16. This 6, 6 5, 5, 3, 5 is what? Okay, anyways, whatever it is. Uh, what does it? Okay, so it doesn't need to match on the other side, but guys, best practices you should match it okay and in mpls it needs to match okay otherwise it's gonna impact your routes so there is a concept in mpls if you run ospf uh, if process id is not matching it's gonna change your route types okay so again there it's gonna have significance as well okay so what is the next command how are we gonna advertise the network Network with okay. uh, network IP, then wildcard mask with area and area ID. 
Okay. So this is why we're going to do the basic concept, basic configuration again. We're going to do the lab of it. It is just I'm telling you. And by the way, this network command is going to do two things. So tell me, guys, what two things it's going to do. It will help to advertise the subnet. OK, so one thing is it's going to advertise subnet. What else? And then the, uh, the unique ID. Would store that to the routing table. So second thing is gonna enable OSPF on that interface. Where this network exists. Okay. This thing happens in OSPF as well as EIGRP. But you guys know that in BGP, that thing never that thing not happen. Network command in BGP is only gonna advertise subnet. For neighborship or to enabling the BGP on a particular interface, what you need? Neighbor command. So BGP is having a different mechanism. OSPF and EIGRP is having a different mechanism, okay? Okay, what is this wildcard? Inverted, inverted subnet mass. Invert subnet mass. So if I am having the subnet mass of this, what is my wildcard mass? Zero 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 dot two five five. Okay, and if I'm having a subnet mask like this, what is my wildcard? Zero zero dot zero zero one two dot two five five dot two five five. So what is the second octet? Thirty-one. It will be zero dot thirty-one dot two five five dot two five five. So guys, a lot of people will say invert, invert, invert. Okay. Do you know the actual how the wild card is going to be calculated? Subtract it. Okay, so 255, 255, 255, 255 minus your subnet mass. And that will get you wildcard mark. So if you stuck, this is the actual formula to calculate wildcard mask. Okay. Okay, so we're done with the basic OSPF. Uh, how many time, how many minutes? So again, if I start the lab, it gonna take one more hour. So let's do the lab tomorrow. Mm, do you have any question guys still here? Let's nope. take one more topic, one more theory topic, okay? Because again, we still have some time left. So let's talk about OSPF network type. So OSPF is having, I need to make it. So network type. So first one is broadcast. 
okay i'm gonna explain every every network type then non-broadcast then point to point point to multi-point point to multi-point non-broadcast okay and some books you will find blue back virtual link those are also some of the network types okay i can consider loop back as one of the network type okay so these many other network types okay but we need to understand what is the difference between them okay which is important for us so first of all uh, application okay application means where we using it so broadcast we using it in ethernet okay which is we used nowadays token ring which you will not find nowadays okay and fddi which also you know will not find these type of networks nowadays so token ring fddi is out of picture right now we use ethernet okay non-broadcast you will find it on frame relay atm x25 which again these type of networks you not find it maybe if you are working on some old setup frame relay you can get it but ATM X25 is out of the picture, okay? Then point to point is wherever you are using serial connections like even T1, okay? You are running HDLC, PPP, GRE, okay? And P2P sub interface. So if you are creating point to point sub interface, okay? So there you will find those. Then point to multi point is again, they are using frame relay. Um, P2P links, okay, P2, P2M links, point to multi point, okay. And then DM VPN, you can get it. Okay, then point to point non-broadcast is again same as point to point, but non-broadcast capability, again, I'm gonna talk, talk about. And loopbacks, you're gonna only get it on your loopback interface, okay, which is, you all knows what is loopback interface now the one now the important thing here is you need to understand dr bdr election where it gonna happen where it not gonna happen okay let me draw this line with red so that it gonna be okay so uh, dr bdr happens in broadcast okay it gonna happens in non-broadcast as well. Point to point will not have it. Point to multi-point will not have it. Okay. And then this is also not have it. And forgot about loopback. So no, because loopback already, we are not creating any neighborship. Then mm -mm -mm, next up. That is important. So broadcast, what we have seen, originating router. So the router which is originating your route. Okay. Next stop is going to be that router. So DR is not going to change the next stop. Okay. Then non-broadcast is also originating router. Point to point, you will have advertisement, advertising router. And by the way, they are actually point to point as well. In topology wise as well, they are point to point, actually. Okay. And uh, in this, this is ad again advertising router. And here also advertising router. Okay. So this is the no not option here. And then multicast capability. So this is multicast. This is not multicast. Okay, so multicast and broadcast. Okay, it cannot do broadcast and multicast. Point to point again, multicast is there. Point to multi point is also you will have multicast hello. Non broadcast is you will not have multicast. 
so what the, what do you understand by the mediums where you don't have the multicast capability how are you going to form the neighborship do anyone know so on those mediums you need to form a neighborship via neighbor command like what we do in bgp okay here we are forming the neighborship with network command on broadcast mediums or point to point mediums but non broadcast we need to form the neighborship with neighbor command okay so that is going to happen uh, sir can you show uh, in the same topology what uh, advertising router about advertising router the other one which one where you draw the diagram maybe the previous one uh, advertising means yes the router which is gonna comes which is advertising the route like r1 okay 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 an originating router is what originate the route okay so your hello time and that time 10:40 31:20 then here you will have 31:20 and uh, lastly cisco or rfc standard okay so non broadcast is cisco proprietary non broadcast is rfc standard point to multi point is rfc standard okay then this is cisco proprietary cisco okay loop back you can leave it okay so this is how you need to you will have these many network types now to learn this table i will give you some points okay so point is if you find a keyword point so always remember there is no election okay and your next stop is of advertising router so in in the above topology if you find point keyword which you find in point to point point to multi point point to multi point non broadcast so there is no dr bdr no election and next stop is of advertise router okay if you find non broadcast keyword in any of that then you will have a manual neighbor so this is again this is simple you are, you know that you will have a manual neighbor okay and if you find multi ka multi point and non broadcast these two keywords so your timers is going to be 3120 okay now if you remember these three lines you can make this complete table although right now if you see as today point of view you should mainly focus on these broadcast okay and point to point these are the two major network types which you going to encounter in today world okay otherwise rest is you can see that frame relay and all that stuff which is we not use now it is okay so make sure you knows about these two for sure okay okay and network type should match so i have told you network type should match for ospf neighborship but there are exceptions which i have told you so exception is if you have one side as broadcast and another side as non broadcast then you can form the neighborship so this is a exception okay so you can form the neighborship or if you have point to multi point one side and point to point another side then also you can form the neighborship so these are the exceptions otherwise your network type should match both side okay so this is all related to 
network types if you want to take a snapshot of this table you can take it okay because again this table tells you a lot so anyone having any doubt any question guys all good yes okay okay so that's all for today tomorrow we gonna start directly from the lab and first we do the lab and if we got the time then we gonna continue with our other theory which is lsa type we left with area type we left with summarizations so again a lot of things are there default route authentication all that stuff okay uh, so excuse gonna... me sir so, just can yeah. i ask one question So you yes. remember you talked about the OSPF passive interface, like prevent mm -hmm. hello. So, sir, mm -hmm. uh, like, is it possible to tell, like, in which cases we will prevent hello in the passive interface? Mm. Okay, so one case I know, but another case we will see it in lab. First of all, let me tell you one case. which i found to be a genuine case okay so it doesn't matter whatever the mass i am having whatever subnet i am so now on r1 if i give a network command like this router ospf1 network Zero 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 two five five two five five two five five two five five area zero. So what does it do? Tell me. It will advertise. It will advertise the both subnets. Okay, so it's gonna advertise. It's gonna enable the OSPF on both of your links. Okay, your hello is gonna go here as well as your hello is gonna go here. Now, if you want, if now, for example, this is R three instead of R three, this is a switch, or this is a PC, or this is a host, or whatever it is. I don't want the my OSPF hello to go over this in this side towards R three. So what I can do is, I can make passive interface. E zero by one. So my hello will not go there. So this is one of the use case. Instead of that, can't we just put in, uh, network ten ten ten? Uh, yes, 10, that is what 10. that is what the thing is. If we put ten ten ten, then again. it's going to do the same effect so to be really frank with you i even not understand why they make this passive interface here uh, because again i need to check one thing in uh, lab if we enable router ospf1 okay and give the router id and we not give network type means we not give any network command will it start sending the hello packets on all of my interfaces or not no idea okay so if it start sending the packets then we need to stop some of the packets because it is a unnecessary bandwidth of uh, unnecessary utilization of bandwidth right so there may be some some interfaces which i don't want to participate in ospf okay and if it is not doing that then i don't care at the first place right then we don't need the passive interface so we going to check that tomorrow in the lab okay but this use case i got it where you will have a network of 000 and then you can make it a passive interface which again unnecessary extra commands you are doing okay so this is one thing okay anyways tomorrow we gonna check that okay anyone having any other question from today class uh sir i just want to uh, ask one thing uh 
so in case if we give network command like 000, it, it's uh, like, we are going to check this tomorrow, but like out of curiosity, mm. I'm asking, mm. is it like uh, still going to advertise OSPF in all the interface? What do you think? Yes, because... this is definitely going to advertise. This, If you give network command as 000, definitely it's going to advertise on every interface. But my question is, if we not give the network command, then it going to advertise hello or not? This is the thing. So I only give router OSPF one. That's it. No network command. Nothing. Then it's going to advertise hello or not on all the interfaces or at any interface that we need to check tomorrow. Okay. But if we give network 00, definitely it's going to send hello to every interface because 000 means you are putting all the IPs in OSPF. So then it's going to include that for sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys, any other question from today class before we wrap up? Okay. Thank you. Sir. So tomorrow we're going to start with the lab and, and I'm going to show you a lot of debugs where we're going to see how the JSNC is formed, how the router ID is going to be selected, all that stuff. Okay, so lab wise, we're going to see everything. Okay, so we need to meet at the same time. Okay, nine o'clock and uh, we're going to continue from here. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining today. Let's meet tomorrow again. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, thank you. Aurel, you can use EVNG as well, but our topology is on GNS3. So again, you need to check with the lab instructor whether he has the topology for EVNG. Otherwise, he will help you with the Oh, GNS3. Okay. Again, let me write support at the rate network journey is the email over which you can ask. Okay. And our backend team is going to reply that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.